job with Blake here getting the up here with these wonderful students. And we're going to talk a little bit about the film and also um, get some perspective on, from them about the film and also about bullying uh, in general and bullying in Santa Cruz and get a, an idea of some of their, their ideas. You've heard from some of these kids already, so you know it's, it's going to be a wild, great ride for the next uh, 45 minutes. So I want to start with having each um, one of the kids introduce themselves to you and let, the, let you know a little bit about who they are. Jackson, you want to start? Because everybody knows you anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, Kevin. Oh, well, that's not, I feel like famous right now. I feel like I'm on The Voice or something. Uh, like, where's your career at? Um, <laughs> cool. uh, so I'm Jackson Brady, and I'm a senior at SoCal High School. Um, I'm in a few clubs in my school that have to do with, like, there's Climate Council, and I'm in that, and Link Crew, which is, like, the kind of, we're the Link Crew leaders, so we kind of go through with, like, freshmen and, like, on their first day of school and kind of, help their year out and like has experience or it's, it's involved. Like, and um, I've been in those two for a while. I'm in Key Club too. And it's like a community service club and I like food and life and those things and Beyonce, so it's great, you know. <laughs> and I'm really happy to be here because this is really exciting. This whole entire time has been so like enlightening to get like see how compassionate and like in depth everything and bullying is and just really cool to see so yeah. my name is Sara Bilba. Um, I am the feminist club president president and the president of the Senior High GSA. Uh, we're both active clubs in the community and we work with the diversity center and we at all the happy women center. Uh, and we like to get kids that are our high school age to know their rights. It's really nice. <laughs> A lot of us don't know them. Um, I, yeah, like Jackson said, this whole day has been really enlightening. And uh, I really stand up for bullying. I don't like it at all. I'm definitely a big bystander intervention person at my school. Uh, there's, it's different because in my experiences of being bullied because it started when I was pretty young, like around fourth grade or so. And, uh, you know, there's the whole, like, list of uh, our slides that we're looking at of the characteristics of these kids that were getting bullied and then looking at them, well, I was never one of those. Like, I don't recognize any of those, like, personality traits in me, so like, why was I cast out? Like, why was I picked on? I don't understand. But, you know, in uh, middle school, like it really just made me stronger. I graduated middle school wearing a tutu. And <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and look at me now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, so Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Villalobos, and I'm a junior. And I'm an avid student, and I'm also a part of the avid club, which is a good way to be involved in getting ready to go to college. And I'm really excited and grateful to be here because I think this is a wonderful experience to learn of ways to help out other students and probably be, actually help people that are getting bullied instead of just being a bystander and actually standing up for them. I'm Carla Dia and I'm a junior at Sukkot High and I'm part of Climate Council, Environmental Club, Abbott Club, and I just really want to help people. And I'm basically here because, for the same reason as you, I want to know more about bullying, I want to know how to prevent it, and I'm all about changing people for the better so, yeah. Thank you all so much for sharing a little bit about who you are, and we're going to get to know you better as we go on here. I wanted to uh, address first to talk a little bit about the movie and see this is the first time you've all seen this movie, like many of us in the room here. Uh, and I want to get a little sense from you on what stood out for you in the movie, what was it, you know, what, what really happened for you when you saw this movie. You can kind of talk a little bit about that. I really liked the way it was made. Like, all the kids were speaking about their own um, 
experiences instead of like some doctor telling us what they know. Like, here's these statistics. Here's the doctor. I'm super smart. But no, they were actually teaching us. <laughs> all doctors are really smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really liked all the kids. They were so honest and they were speaking out about it. And it helped me recognize that there are lots of types of bullying too. Um, and that we go to a really uh, school that's not racially diverse. Like, it's not really racially diverse. Like these other schools, and we don't have that kind of bullying, so help me recognize like, the bullying that we have in our town. And how we can help our community with that kind of bullying. What kind of, when you're talking about that, Carlo, what kind of bullying do you see at, at your school and in your community? I see, like, um, just bullying on, like, social status. Mm -hmm. In our school, and it's really wrong. I find that there's like kind of a weird hierarchy of like social status. There's also like a lot of uh, gay bashing. Not not a uh, not like really profound, but there's like a lot of like oh you're a homo, like you're a fag, whatever. And it's like well, like I'm sure with you, like with your integrity and your morals, gosh, your intelligence. I'm sure you can pick up more appropriate word to use than calling that person a faggot. Like, I'm sure you've got something up there in your head. So Way you better this describe something up, there. something up there, you know. But uh, I find that there's a lot of slut-shaming. Like, I know that this is middle school, like, they only kind of talked about, like, oh, you're a hoe, and, like, that's sexist, and there's, like, the double standards that we have going on here that are developed, like, really early on. But uh, uh, it, in high school, it becomes, like, a lot more so, like the slut shaping, and I'd like, really like to stop that in the family school. We really uh, pride ourselves on being who we are and, you know, standing up for other people, other women. Yeah, it sounds like that's a really important thing for you too, Sarah, is to be someone who stands up for other people, that you've really taken on that role in your school. Yeah, I mean, when there's like, bullies. Uh, um, my cousin came up to me, he's like seven years old. He's like, Sara, there's a bully at my school. Like, I tried to tell him something that like, he was like, doing something that wasn't nice to some kid and he pushed me. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> you're seven. <laughs> uh, and it's odd, because like, when I reflect back on that, like, that's when like, bullying started happening to me. It's like not right. I think that's when we really need to start like uh, teaching empathy, those kinds of things, which kind of happens. But it, it really depends on like this kind of school that they just showed in the movie was a different kind of school than we have in Santa Cruz schools. So I find that that makes a difference in like the environment that we have. A lot of Santa Cruz schools, like, for the most part, I feel are like Santa Cruz as a whole is like pretty uh, isolated as an anomaly of sorts of cities, but uh, it's just odd that that happens, that, like, that still happens as kids are so young, and uh, it's like who can tell what like really, um, you know, provokes these bullies, it's like, they must be so like, self, like, uh, self-conscious that their ego inflates, and so you know, it's, uh, everything that someone else does really, uh, bothers them and bothers them internally but really they really like, don't know how to ignore that and so uh, you know their actions like you you may be doing nothing but and then what they do to you like is just unjustifiable like you can't they have no reason to do that except that they are how they are and we try to want to attack that more in the core to really uh, calm children, I don't know, to teach them empathy, to teach them that other people are different and you don't need to like take certain actions like that. But it still happens in high school. They spend all the time in classrooms. It's not it's not okay. It's like a person's not doing anything to you, you need to not gang up on them, you need to not like talk badly about them, you need to not bully them or attack their weaknesses, it's not okay. Speaking of that, a lot of what was happening in the film around bullying world was kids getting bullied because they were somehow different from from their peers. Uh, 
religion, ethnicity, somebody was too short, um, the way was able. What's your sense about that from sort of what you know, you know, your years of growing up and seeing some of that stuff? What's your sense about, you know, what what causes that? Why do people want to believe something who's different? I guess like family life or where you come from. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of um, parents that I, the kids that I know, their parents are kind of like homophobic. So they're homophobic too, and I guess family life really plays into that. It's mm, a really good point, and in some of the points that they talked about earlier as yeah. well. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the guy with his brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it roots from ignorance, like how that uh, one kid was like, oh, I go teach people about my religion. Mm -hmm. um, well, it really just all spawns from ignorance and not like, uh, like being in special ed or having special needs. It's like not like a big thing. It's like, well, you need to understand why you can't, like, or it just doesn't give you a reason to do that. That's not, that's not a good reason at all or any kind of reason to say anything about that. Yeah, and I think this movie really portrays like bullying in a really general sense and I think it's really like a really good depiction of it, but I think with our school and schools that I'm familiar of around this county, I think has a kind of like an evolved sense of bullying in a sense, sense of sense. Um, and I think that people don't go like, oh, you're dumb. And I feel like people just like laugh because it's like that's stupid because a lot of people don't consider that as an insult anymore. To me, I that's what I've noticed is like when someone says like, oh, Jackson, you're dumb. I'm like, oh, you know, it's cool. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Um, but I notice like a lot of people, if they're really determined, really go get beneath people's skin and say things like to that one poor kid who was like in sixth grade and he said like, oh, because you're Jewish, like what is that? Like you're trying so hard to find something. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just is so disgusting to know that someone will go to that extent to really, it just shows so much character on their part. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, there's just such weird, like, ways that bullying has evolved. Like, yeah. There's this one, um, I was in class, like, last week I went and talked to a teacher about it, and I, like, cleared everything up. I, like, interviewed and was like, look, you guys need to, like, sit down, stop, like, why don't you go get some work done? This poor kid, like, you need to go lay off him. Um, and they, like, there are these three guys. There's this other kid, and I think that he has autism or something, and, like, I don't think that these other guys know it, but he's just, like, a little, whatever. He's got, like, his differences. he got, like, whatever he wants to do. That's fine. It's, like, but for some reason, he, like, really affects these, like, three guys that all, like, gang up or friends are in that class, and, like, there's just this weird system of, like, being a predator of, like, but, like, hunting in the group. It's, like, Exactly. This kid just wants to be loved and accepted. Yeah. And like he just wants to make friends and there's these guys who like are just like out. putting the bait out there, be like, Oh, we're totally your friends. Like that's why you're in a group with us. That's why we sit near you. That's why we like talk to you or yeah. like just make fun of you, do whatever. But like really they're like totally messing with them, totally being jerks to them, like and like yeah. I would just sit there in class and be like Does he not <laughs> Does no one else see this? Like, <laughs> I'm so concerned. Like, I can't even do my work. I'm just, like, hoping that this kid is, like, okay. Because, you know, he, like, uh, I, like, touch him and he, like, twitches. Like, you know, get away from me. Like, obviously this kid doesn't feel safe. Like, someone needs to do something about this. And so I, like, tell the teacher. The teacher uh, goes, takes this, the kid who's being, like, victimized outside. And I go up to these three guys. I'm like, look, you guys got to have some goddamn integrity and not... And like step it up you got it's not a secret that you guys are bullying this kid in class everyone can see it everyone knows that you're doing it and like I'm here to tell you guys that you need to stop like being jerks not like have some more like courage you know no one's gonna want to be friends with you <laughs> and since then they've totally just stopped picking on him it, it was really hilarious. They just got so embarrassed. They like, I gather my story. I was like, you all need to listen up. Because it, it was like, especially after um, 
like there's been those two suicides at uh, Aptos High, which is very sad and unfortunate. And so I talked to him, I was like, people, people literally kill themselves because they're bullied. Like what you do is like completely not okay. It doesn't matter like what this kid is doing to you because people are dying that you do this. And so like, it just uh, it made them really embarrassed and it made them really quiet and they just went to their work and went down to their actual seats and I, they just have stopped picking on that kid. And I'm really glad that kid feels safe there. Uh, thank you, Asara. It's such a, an amazing example of being an ally and someone who can stand up and somebody who's trying to change the culture of school. You know, and that's really important. Um, you know, we, we were talking a little bit about the, at the table, a little bit about, uh, once again, different ways or different reasons why people get bullied. And one of the things that we were talking about is racial bullying. And we were kind of talking about that in terms of Santa Cruz. And I don't know, Stephanie, you were talking about in the, so, do you want to, well, you go ahead. <laughs> in schools, sometimes it's seen like, you see like, the white people hang out in a certain place or like you see them always participating in school activities but you never see any other types of students like Latinos for example participating and I think it's because like sometimes yes other students may feel intimidated by them but us like Latinos like some of my friends I know we're intimidated and that's why we like not really participate even though we want to and I think that's a big issue because I think everybody should be able to participate and have the same opportunities as everybody else and I think it does create problems in classrooms because you can walk into a classroom and you feel like the tension because you know you see like all the different little groups separated and like they sit with each other and it's like you feel kind of comfortable because then no one gets along Mm -hmm. Or like, it's just, you can't really work with other people because of that tension. And I think that's like an issue that should be worked on. And I think, cause in an avid freshman class, we had an intervention, which Jackson and Carla were part of. And it was because there was that tension. And I think doing certain activities and talking to students separately can help them get mm -hmm. through it but sometimes it may be hard because some just don't want to actually listen to that. It's totally true that we have like these weird groups in our school that are like racially I separated. Think, I think that goes for like all Santa Cruz schools because of like yeah. the demographics of like the kids that go to school in uh, like the public schools in Santa Cruz that it's mostly like Latino and then white and it's pretty cut down the middle but like it's really segregated once you get into the school and like you see like who's hanging out with who and it's just all not not mixed and it seems so like it seems like people don't realize they're doing it it's kind of subconscious or really like accepted that we do this and it's really wrong so it's kind of part of the culture yeah. of the school and maybe the culture of Santa Cruz yeah. What are you thinking? I think there's part even, of like, sorry. Yeah. There's <laughs> even classes that are like racially segregated and it scares me. Mm. I think part of like climate council I know is um, creating like a uh, different climate within cl like classrooms that really mixes up um, like mixes up people of different races because they want to, we want to like close, we want to like mush the gap, you know, we want to uh, cr like create a school where everyone can like socialize with each other without feeling tension. And and so it sounds like climate council, maybe AVID, are places where where some of that mixing is happening. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. AVID is more like for kids who are like underprivileged uh -huh. and want to go to college or want to get higher classes, more advanced classes. So we have those classes in place and I think it really helps because in that class I feel more comfortable than any other class mm -hmm. but it's because in that class we have the time to you know like interact with each other which other classes we're just trying to cover material mm -hmm. so it's really hard to do that so you like actually get to know each other then and, yeah. and so the differences are not as big when you get to know each other yeah because we're kind of like a family because we all know each other and we're just like 
good friends in that class. And I think that's what makes it like a great class. But it's because we know each other very well. And we've been in that class all three years and some sophomores for two years. Yeah, and it sounds like that's a really successful program and a successful way to, to start to break down some of those barriers to get to know each other. It's kind of a novel concept. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> do they have exactly. like, do you know if they have avid groups and other, besides SoCal and like a uh, Harbor? I think they have some yeah. like Mission Hill. That's cool. <laughs> so one of the things that came up in, in the film too was the whole idea about rumors. And um, one of the girls was really upset because her, her friends turned on her on the last day of school. That happens, I know, a lot in middle school. Are you seeing that as well in, in high school? And sort of what, what, what's the dynamics around rumors in high school? Oh, God. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Jackson, do you, do you have anything to say mm. about that? It's like hard because from what I know, I don't want to be like, just say something and be like ignorant to everything else, you know? And just say like, oh, to me, like, because to me, I see like that there are a few kind of kind of high school like standard things where you're just like oh my gosh Courtney just talked about like Ricardo and <laughs> Filippo Tita or something I don't know and just like things that I mean are stereotypical for high schools to do in a sense where it's just like yeah so there are a lot of times where there is gossip but I feel like in specifically my senior class I feel like there's not a lot of people that really care in a sense about gossip and it's like we all tolerate each other and I think it's like a really kind of special thing it's like we're not obviously perfect but we're in a sense really close to being something that would be kind of ideal for I wish all of my years for high school that could have been because I feel like when I came there freshman year I've had a lot of problems with I re like just like I remember like all the bully names like of like all of like the people that like I would walk home from school and there was this guy I won't say his name just in case he's in the audience somewhere yeah. and like <laughs> um, he was driving by and I like walked home every single day from school and he's like fucking fat you can go die and just like things like that and just mm -hmm. like it's not and then they he was with his friends and started laughing and everything mm -hmm. and just things like that. It really just stays with you. Regardless of how good your life is now, you still reflect on it and you think about it. So it's, you think it's something that has to do with you and then it's something that like, oh, there's something wrong with me, mm -hmm. you know? And it, you associate those things and it sucks and you just kind of like contemplate just like, why me? Why do I have to be like this or you always mm -hmm. think it's like something with you. Mm -hmm. that's, and it's such a powerful thing that you just talked about as well, yeah. about even when you know something's not true, to have it, to yeah. have someone say that, it's, it stays with you. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. You're a senior now, and it's yeah. still very... Exactly. Um, it's really significant. And like we were talking about like just like, I think Sara brought up something where it's like, especially with like homosexuality and like gay and lesbian and bisexual, just like all, whatever everything you are, you're an alien, whatever it is, <laughs> you're like considered lesser. And I remember in sixth grade, I would never want to be like, at pe at people would call me gay, like off the bat. And I would be like, I would not want to ever admit that I'd ever be like that. I would never thought about it. I didn't know what that meant. And I just knew that I didn't want to be anything like that. I didn't want to do anything that was associated because they put it in such a negative connotation. And so how am I supposed to, it was just like, of course I'm like, I've always, I'm cool with it now, but it's like, why would you bring something that is so natural for someone to be into such a negative form? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as like, uh, when they were like... Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. It's, it's just like saying, uh, when that one kid was like, well, they made fun of me for being Jewish. It's like, how could you turn that into an insult? It's yeah, like, it's like just how you are. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not really something mm -hmm. like... You can change this off of that, like. Mm -hmm. I think as far as rumors go in SoCal, like, um, uh, SoCal in particular, I feel like is a, a pretty like. I think that everyone in SoCal like like tolerates each other. I think everyone's generally like really nice to each other on campus. I feel mm -hmm. pretty special yeah. to go to that school. Um, 
you guys start talking a little bit about homophobic violence and homophobic slurs, those kinds of things. And it was something that both of our morning speakers really brought up as such an, a, uh, an important and integral part about what happens with bullying. And so I wanted to check in with you folks about how much that's happening in, in, in your school. Uh, is that something that's pervasive in your school? Is it, you know, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, at our school, I don't think it's as bad as some other schools yeah. because we have like GSA and a lo we have a lot of like out gay students or like transgender. Uh huh. And so, so and having having out out students is really yeah. helpful. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It changes yeah. the climate. It does change. It really the climate. does, definitely. Like people definitely like will like look around, like look behind their shoulders before they're like blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> it's like oh. Well, of course, you, you must feel ashamed that you're like saying something like that if you're like, like you know it's wrong. But mm -hmm. uh, so the climate is, it's not okay. Yeah, people people will call you out on it. It kind of depends on who you're friends with and where you're at. But uh, I think having such active clubs um, really yeah. helps um, tone down the mm -hmm. homophobic slurs. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, I know people are st still call each other faggots. It's not right. Like yeah. people don't even know what they're saying, really. Uh, yeah. Having the clubs there is like helpful in the way that the like gay students or like transgender students like know there's people out there who would be there for them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we're. Uh, I, f I feel that SoCal is really inclusive. That um, like if you're uh, out or if you're transgender or whatever, like people ma really make an effort to make you feel like supported and make you feel um, yeah. like included. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't feel like super unsafe when I like walk around, except like when I'm in classrooms and people are like, uh, oh, that's gay, blah, 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 talking in their groups. And then I'm like, well, now I'm with these guys and this is really annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but it's uh, more tight, like middle school is definitely more of a place to target like um, homophobic slurs. In my eighth grade year, I started up the uh, the New Brighton Middle School GSA, and that was really great. Uh, that helped a lot of people. I'm not really sure how it is doing now, but uh, we had a lot of people. And there was like when we first started that club, there was so much gay bashing. Like our posters were ripped down. They were like written all over. Like it was terrible. <laughs> it was just like. So, such like rudeness that was going on and uh, like, even for me like I I always had friends it was like great but um uh, people like assumed that I was a lesbian and like no one ever like told me that face to face and no one even like really cyber bullied it but like more in middle school people would be like oh yeah everyone thought you were a lesbian and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> and and you know that's really you know for every for every gay kid who gets harassed, there are at least four straight kids who also get harassed because they may be perceived as being gay, which is sort of what you're talking about, you know, just the perception of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, and for maybe any of you in the audience that don't know, a GSA is a Gay Straight Alliance, and most of our schools in the county have GSAs, and it's so wonderful to hear that middle schools also have GSAs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about sexual harassment uh, because that came up in this film around you know uh, you know boys we saw it in the movie boys standing inside pointing at the girls who were running or um, you know challenging each other to touch a girl touch the girl's <laughs> booty that kind of thing um, what what's your experience you know in, in schools around sexual harassment and how does that happen in your school Sexual harassment sucks. Everyone, every student is entitled to their Title IX rights. Um, our district is not following Title IX rights right now, uh, so they're a little bit under the eye, like a little bit hot with. Um, Feminist Club in particular, 
we're, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm upset that uh, we had like a sexual harassment um, case that happened and like we don't have anyone to deal with Title IX. And we also have had some in the past at SoCal. But around, around like all the kind of bullying, I feel that sexual harassment is actually one of, and like teen dating violence is one of the more, uh, I noticed that one the most. Um, it's terrible. I think that like we there's been I'm friends with people who've been sexually harassed and then their whole schedule has changed, but then it was completely to like the for the guy's favor. Like they moved her out of all of his classes and mm. I was just like that's not even it's not even okay. <laughs> like yeah. but um mm -hmm. like Title IX uh, extends to beyond sports. It's to your right to have education. Uh, without being harassed, without being bullied, without like feeling like you can't go to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just gather my thoughts, Jack, when you talk. Let me, yeah, let yeah, me yeah, ask yeah, yeah. Let me <laughs> another like, question here with that. So, you know, we saw in the, in the film that sometimes boys feel pressured to do those kinds of things because if they don't, then somebody's going to call them gay. Um, yeah, what's it like to be a boy, especially a boy in, in middle school, and have that kind of pressure? Boy. Yeah, I know. Have, hello, I'm a boy. No, um, so, um, I think... And, and have you felt that kind of, did you feel that kind of pressure? I personally was more, I, I guess I would feel that pressure. It was more, I feel like I did, but it's like, I'm more, what I reflect on my middle school problems being is, trying to refrain from doing anything that was gay so that's why that's a lot of the things so i guess that would be one of the things would just try to be like i would tend to be friends with a lot of girls and so like this one girl said she liked me in seventh grade and i was like oh my god this is the best day of my life <laughs> so, <laughs> so then i was like i can finally live my life now so but then i figured out then she was like sorry i'm in love with someone else and i'm like it's cool we had something special so it's whatever <laughs> So, I mean, there is this, like, an aspect of, like, you're kind of supposed to, like, have, like, relationships, like, relationships or, like, types of things. I just always, I guess this is going to sound, like, super mama boyish, but I, like, to me, for a reason, just, like, I love my mom a lot, and, like, my mom and I are the same people, and I just, I look at her, and I just, the thing is, is just, like, I don't know why I connect these two things, but I would never, this is, like, weird, I don't know if this is supposed to be like this, or normal, or whatever, <laughs> but I would never treat a girl as I would, like, treat any different, I would treat her as if in my mom, in a sense, in the same respect level. That's my <laughs> question, so. I would say that. That's not that thing. So, Thank you, Jackson. And I was like, oh, yeah, Thank you. Nice cool. and, I, and your mom is very proud of you, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I was like, hi, hey, mom. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just my thing. Yeah. Know. And, you know, for, for some of the girls on the panel, you know, for guys who think that maybe doing that is cool and that you like it, I mean, what, like, how do you talk to them about that? There was actually one instance where we ha we were having a gender discussion in our class, and this kid he s he called someone a pussy while we were having a gender discussion. <laughs> Whoops. I'm like, so are you kidding me? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I guess nobody really said anything at first because like, should we say anything? Should we not? What does that mean? Why why yeah. is it so bad? Why does it degrade women? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know. People didn't, nobody really had an initial reaction, so people weren't sure if they should just kind of go with it or if people should say something. So I guess at, they wanted to conform with some kind of group, but they couldn't. Mm. So I kind of spoke up, but I kind of just babbled something because I really wanted to uh -huh. just punch them in the mouth. And, and did your teacher uh, help you with that to speak up or address it? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she she probably <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she tried somewhere. She tried. Um, I think that like I think she did have a talk with him. I think that uh, I I love how Jackson is like. Well, I have the mo as much respect for like another woman as I would like my mother, and then that like there's like that, and then there's the complete like 
like the opposite sort of where uh, there's there's like kind of a culture change um, with how uh, uh, men respect women at, in high, high schools I feel like because um, it like from middle school where you're being pressured to like uh, like sexually harass a girl so that you're not called like gay you're not like a homo or whatever but um and then it just objectifies women and then uh you know and then start like addressing women as bitches start like you know just not really um not addressing them as people and uh i feel that that kind of happens a lot and that um yeah it's just kind of scary that like a lot of societal norms are demeaning to women <laughs> like yeah. calling women bitches or just like how they slap their butts. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. They, yeah. us oh, sorry. they usually also like stereotype women too. Like, oh, they're pretty, but like they're dumb, kind of. Mm. It's like referring back to how we had discussions in our English class about gender too. And like they did not, they only talk about men and women. They didn't talk about anything else. And I think it's that they need to work on actually bringing other topics too, not just specifically base it off women and men. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a huge issue too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you, would you be comfortable telling your teacher that? I think so. Yeah, all right. Let's talk <laughs> about the, uh, how about cyber sexism and the friend zone? Mm -hmm. So the friend zone, I don't know if you guys know about this friend zone. Ooh, it's um, great. It punishes women for saying no like uh when like you know a man compliments a woman then uh and then she's like oh you know thank you it's like well and then they're like well you want to date me huh and she's like uh no and then they're like wow way way to friend zone me it's like i feel like that happens a lot in high school because it's like well high school people it's like i it's not that like uh the stereotype of like oh we're just um you know women are just like caddy like lead like like to lead you on but it's like uh maybe you don't want to go to the movies like uh maybe i don't know i might have plans it's not just because like uh you, we don't like that we're doing that it's like we don't really know how our feelings are about you and you know being a teenage girl is no different in fact it's like amplified <laughs> um, and so like the friend zone uh takes place a lot on the internet i feel because harassment so, like we'll be like hey babe like just messaging you a lot or just uh, uh being messaged by someone continuously ignoring them ignoring them and then be like you're really pretty you're like thanks but you know i think that you're kind of a creep and it's like <laughs> well why do you think so you know you're just like messaging me like one in the morning for like five different times you notice how i didn't reply back to you <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so a lot of that kind of harassment yeah. happens on the internet. the internet, yeah, uh, yeah. Def definitely, like, harassment happens, like, on Facebook and text messaging, mm -hmm. uh, and then the friend zone is really crappy for, like, uh, punishing women for saying no, it's like, well, mm -hmm. you complimented me, is that supposed to just, like, mm -hmm. you know, strip off all my clothes, I want to be with you, <laughs> it's just, that's not how it works. <laughs> so not respecting yeah, your, and that's your like ability really to, not, to say yes or no. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not respecting women's, like, rights to say yes and no mm -hmm. and I feel like um uh respecting women and their boundaries is like a really big deal in high school because uh, I mean sexual harassment is like all over the place it's like way bigger than we even think mm -hmm. like because there's so much more that's not reported and and you know the kind of a question about that um because I know a lot of bullying and harassment goes on that we adults don't see and it would you say that the sexual harassment is the kind of bullying or that, that most of us adults don't see or maybe we don't pay attention to? What, what's your sense about that, you guys? Um, I would say maybe more like the, uh, just like the, the friendship bait bullying yeah. where yeah. it's mm -hmm. like, like the um, banter. yeah, like the banter, mm -hmm. like that's kind of stuff that's not addressed that much. And, um, I've definitely gone up to teachers and be like, look, I don't think that your classroom is safe. And if I was a teacher and like a student came up to me and like, I don't think that your classroom is safe, I'd be like, oh, 
oh no, <laughs> I gotta do something about that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's de- it's definitely the friendship banter, but or like the um, like I said, like the three kids that were like, you know, putting out the like, oh, we totally accept you, we totally want to be your friend. Just kidding, like I'm just gonna mess with you, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like is not really perceived by teachers. Uh huh. So they may not even yeah. use it, or they don't want to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, the sexual yeah. harassment stuff is uh. Mm, not so much like unnoticed by teachers but it's done not in, in like the presence of teachers mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so um kind of talking a little bit more about about teachers and school personnel so would would you feel comfortable if, if some bullying was happening would you feel comfortable reporting it to an adult on campus and and what would happen if you did that uh, talking about teachers like at Climate Council, we have teachers there at the meetings, and mm-hmm. one teacher said like he wasn't sure if he should address it if he didn't know if they were just kind of like being, like being boys or uh-huh. like if it was real bullying. But I think they should like stop it anyway. I bet one of them feels uncomfortable about it. Yes, yeah. that's a really that's a really good point. Yes, yeah. yes, because sometimes. You know, we adults say things like, well, you know, boys will be boys, or, you know, it's just part of what happens in school, everybody has to deal with it, but you're, you're talking about that it, it can be hurtful, and it's always important for us adults to, to step in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like a lot of students actually don't know how to go about those things. No. It's not, um, it's like teachers uh, are welcoming, like, tell me, you know, tell me if you've seen bullying, like, tell somebody if you've seen bullying, but really, like, um, not a lot of people know how to go about that and like real uh know how to address it properly yeah yeah i think school is like where you have to learn just like not only academics but social skills and i feel like for someone to go up to a teacher and talk to them i feel like that just that's their responsibility and i think that they Mm. should be able to go and do that without feeling like they're gonna make beef with anyone. I feel like they should have just, I don't know. I'm like, I've had like so many thoughts about it. So it's like trying to like condense it all into like one little like box. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that it's, oh, no, I had a thought and it's gone. It's way gone, it's gone, it's forever gone. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it was there, it okay. was there. So, so we just close. have a, a couple <laughs> minutes left and um, so yeah, a whole room full of adults here. School people, clinicians, doctors, all kinds of powerful people. Yeah, hi guys. Um, it's, it's you there. Can each one of you just say briefly what the most important thing adult can do to help bullying? Think about it, it for a second. I would say like hypervigilance, but I, I know how exhausted everyone is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> giving you a break. It, yeah. it can be difficult having like 120 students like a day, every day. can be r- ridiculously, uh, uh, really difficult. I think that um, it's really important to have so, uh, certain, certain programs to uh, rally with. Um, how we were talking about programs that don't work, the programs that are being marketed but don't work. Mm-hmm. I think we need to like uh, have having rallies and uh, gathering people all together. Um, you know, we don't. Uh, it's high school. We don't really talk about those touchy, touchy yeah, feely so things. Talking about them more. But mm-hmm. like, um, I know for sure, like uh, GSA or uh, feminist club. Sorry. Is started uh, is planning a rally for next year, um, and we're addressing teen dating violence, uh, which Title IX is supposed to do. Um, <laughs> okay. so, and, uh, and and so those are really good things. Um, Stephanie, do you have something you want to let the adults know? I think it would be helpful if like the teachers or counselors would try to like talk more to their students or at least so they so the students feel more comfortable speaking to them and actually mm-hmm. going to them if there's a problem mm-hmm. and just being able to actually talk to them and get help if they really need it great okay you guys yeah. are so good okay Jackie? um my big thing is just i think well personally i'm sure that these wonderful ladies do too but when I'm at school I look up to teachers and I look up to counselors I look up to everyone that works there as like adults and I respect them and I trust them in a sense and I think that 
anyone that deals with kids or deals with anything like all these amazing people you guys are, um, give out the respect and trust to the kids and expect that they'll do the same for you, I think is like the biggest one. Because mm. that's what I try to do, especially for the teachers and counselors and people that believe in me. Like I trust that they will, it's like kind of like this like kind of cycle of reciprocation. And I think that once you guys, just like we're tolerance and respect meet in hand in hand in a sense. It's like once mm. you kind of respect and trust someone, I feel like then it's just like a give and give in fact. So that's yeah. my big thing. There's um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, there is definitely a way where um, teachers and uh, counselors don't have to be the social workers, uh, and it's all in like uh, paying attention to people's behavior. Mm. And there's really little things that you can do that will like uh, shape people's behavior. I'd say. Um, Classes that have more structure, that have more, um, you know, things that you go over, are classrooms that make kids feel safer. Okay. Uh, classes that don't have a lot of structure, that are a lot more free, like there's a certain thing about them that just um, is a little bit uh, more chaotic. But um, there. Uh, so, is. sorry, I'm gonna stop you for a second because. We're just about out of time. Okay. And as much as I know everybody wants to hear more, um, but I'm gonna let Carla say the last thing here. Okay. Um, teachers, I think, um, if you could be kind of open with your students or at least be available or, like let your students know that you will be there for them if there is an instance of bullying or aggression and because when I was in middle school, I had a bully who sat right next to me, and my teacher didn't acknowledge it at all. I didn't think she would care. Mm -hmm. And But just having maybe one teacher or a counselor or someone there, that would have changed a lot. Yeah. I think teachers need to be kind of hard asses once in a while <laughs> uh, and really, like, crack down because a lot of, like, instances where I don't feel safe in class and like want to report like bullies or people saying stuff is times when like they're shouting these things and like this teacher needs to like you know it's just their bare minimum to like pay attention and have awareness in their classroom and to make sure that all the like kids feel safe and like to really like go up to these kids and be like we don't use that language here like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that, like put some great. discipline down on them. <laughs> So uh, I want to thank all of you, Jackson, Asara, Stephanie, and Carla, for your thoughtfulness. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.